Welcome back, gang. It's Deltia from DeltiasGaming.com here with a one bar PVE build for the Magic Templar. This build I used to complete solo Veteran Vatashram Hollow in 22 minutes. And I also ran the new Veteran Trial Dread Cell Reef. You'll want to watch this video for a simple and effective one bar build loadout. I'm going to give you options for the Mythic, Oaken Soul, or Non Mythic for gear and the average player. Make sure to smash that thumbs up if you found this video helpful and you like these one bar builds. Also come watch me live on twitch.tv slash gaming. Let's get started. So the first thing up we're going to cover is the skills. But before we get to the skills, you have weapon choices. Let me explain what to use and why these are relevant. There's three primary weapon choices. Flame Staff. Consider this a really good overall solo one bar build. It provides really good single target damage and pressure due to the passives and the way the Flame Staff actually works. So when you're weaving on a Flame Staff, you'll see it shoots a little fireball out like this. Really easy to land the attacks. But if you fully charge heavy attack takes a bit of a second and you actually have to aim it so if you don't aim it it doesn't go to the target lightning staff's a little bit different when you light attack it looks similar to the same right but i fully charge heavy attack i look away and it fully charges and lands very very easily plus i get a proc a little bit of uh, status effects and i can set the off balance if i use certain skills that might be a little bit relative later it's too long didn't read us flame staffs is going to do overall more damage single target and going to be better on boss fights lightning staff is going to be better for the new player and last but not least i run daggers specifically in groups people ask me all the time why i run daggers and it's primarily due to the twin blade and blunt passive coming from the dual wield skill line each dagger increases your crit chance by 812 nothing in the destruction staff skill line has this advantage over the staffs the downside is when you do a fully charge heavy attack with dual wield you restore stamina not magic it's not very new player friendly but just realize this is the optimal for pure raw damage too long didn't read here is for the average player i'd go with the lightning staff fire as you start advancing learning how to manage your resources and want a little bit more damage now we're going to work through the skill bar and these images here are the skills that i use and i'm going to go through them and explain why the first ability up when i consider a hard hitting damage over time both single target and aoe is blazing spear comes from the adric spear skill line you chuck it and at 28 meters where it lands it's going to do damage up front big aoe damage over time so the damage over time is quite substantial even single target and aoe just casting this once and leaving on the ground is worth keeping it up it also can proc the burning light passive when you deal damage with an adric spear ability four times in rapid succession you deal a bunch of magic damage to your target combining this with our main spam we're going to be proccing a lot of burning lights and doing a lot of damage over time whether it's single target or aoe speaking of our main ability let's just talk about that and that's puncturing sweeps it's a channel huge radius decent magic cost and it obviously procs what we've already talked about and that's burning light another thing it also procs is spear wall minor protection the oak and soul ring is going to give us major protection so when you're using a channel when you're activating a spear ability you're basically getting minor protection on top of major protection making you extremely tanky just for using your main stamina mobility the trick with puncturing sweeps is to know the range and the radius of it so a lot of times you'll see templars right on top of a target and you don't necessarily need to be you need to be on top so your daggers or whatever you're using hits right but what if we switch to a flame staff how close do we really need to be here doesn't land right here a little bit closer and then here look how far away that actually is that's pretty far away also the angle and the radius if i go right here you wouldn't think sweeps would land nope look still landing light attacks is still landing even though i'm not exactly right on top of the target I'm hitting a huge wide radius and looking at the tooltip isn't going to be doing this justice so when you're doing trials, trash, solo, raids, whatever you're doing, you need to make sure that you're hitting as many targets as possible and understanding the radius in kind of like a big, huge area in front of you because it'll ramp up your damage and it'll ramp up your healing done because what puncturing sweeps heals you off of is based off the damage. More targets, more AOE, more damage. When in doubt, you could not even execute and basically have this just on your bar and spam it over and over. I completed a uh, veteran Mattishram Hollow 
Buffaloes and Maelstrom Arena literally with one button and no ultimate, nothing else on my bar. So that's how you use it and that's why you use it. Now we have an execute. So if you don't know what executes are, Basically, you do a lot more damage at certain thresholds of HP. There's two different morphs to pick from in Dawn's Wrath. This right here is Radiant Oppression. This is what I'm using when I play in groups. It does the most damage possible, while the other morph, Radiant Glory, heals you based on the damage done. So a really important decision you need to make. Average players, you're going to want to take Radiant Glory. The reason why, you're going to go from hitting puncturing sweeps, getting massive amount of heals, and then all of a sudden your heals are just going to boom, turn off if you don't have the Radiant Glory morph. So take the other morph until you get better, until you play with groups, until you get proficient at the combat. And how the executes are going to work primarily is at or around about 30% health, it's going to replace your main spamble. So you're going to switch from puncturing sweeps, single target wise, on a boss to Radiant Oppression because it does more damage. The lower the health goes, the harder this hits. So after some time, you stop even applying certain buffs and defense buffs because it just makes more sense to click rating oppression rather than refresh your dots not that relevant to one bar build because we don't have a whole bunch of them but something to understand that's important if you take off the training wheels and go to a two bar build and you just like the two bar rotation type of gameplay too long didn't read start at right around 25 percent health to be safe and take the other morph as a new player because you won't die as soon as you go from puncturing sweeps to the glory. It's just not worth the extra healing. We have our damage over time, Blazing Spear. Once that's thrown and in place for 10 seconds, we're gonna use puncturing sweeps until the boss gets around 25%. What else do we do and why? Well, and when you're playing solo specifically, no one's gonna give you Major Breach. You're gonna have to do this for yourself. Major Breach strips resistances by 5,948. That's roughly 8%. Damage. In case you don't know, mobs have around 18,200 resistances. So when you're playing solo, you want to get as close to the cap as possible without going over it because there is no over pen in solo PvE, for instance. That's why Elemental Drain is so good and one of the main reasons we use it. It costs nothing. It has a 28 meter range. It lasts for a very long time. And typically, it'll outperform almost any other ability you can put on there because of the major breach component giving you a raw eight percent damage plus it just keeps your bar very very simple and the other component is minor magic steel typically you're going to get major breach and minor magic steel when you're running in a group a healer a tank someone else is going to provide these buffs for you not playing solo so you can expect a huge damage increase and a huge sustain increase on this by keeping this applied on the main priority target so you might switch specifically in vatashram arena there's little laser beam lines that will kill you if you don't kill them this is something worth casting because for that time Time when you're on that target you're going to ramp up your dps so you're going to use this first another reason i like using lml drain here is it doesn't aggro the target so you can basically put this on and kind of hang around here and then wait for your tank to pull or if you're solo wait to drop a meteor or something and not pull aggro and it costs nothing okay now kind of a complicated one and that's camouflage hunter this is a stamina ability and it gives you major savagery and major prophecy those are redundant if you're using oak and soul typically folks use mages Guild Inner Light, which gives you the same buff, but Mage's Guild gives you a lot more max magic. The reason I choose Fighter's Guild is if you crit from the flank and you're going to be primarily, especially playing solo, you're going to get Minor Berserk. That's going to give you a raw amount of damage. And there's no cooldown on that. So you can keep that up 100% of time. There's a couple other advantages in here too. Banish the Wicket, especially when you play solo with having a Fighter's Guild ability slotted. Three ultimate whenever you kill an enemy. Number two is the Slayer, increasing your weapon and spell damage by 3%. This is raw damage. Inner Light tooltip wise will read that it's going to do higher but you gotta factor in minor berserk and the ultimate generated when you're killing mobs. Consider this a flex spot on your bar. You notice I don't have any heals and I don't have any shields. The reason why is I'm always close to a mob, so I'm using puncturing sweeps or I'm using radiant glory at range, so I don't really need a heal. The average player may feel uncomfortable with that, so I would go on the light armor skill line and pick up harness magic. This is gonna give you a big, huge shield. It basically gives you an extra layer of health. So if your health drops quickly, you can apply this, close Close the distance and hit puncturing sweeps a bunch to get yourself up full. If you don't like that and you're still kind of nervous and leery, use Honor the Dead. It's going to be a lot better to sustain than Breath of Life. You can set in your bar and get a massive amount of healing. Just realize I personally don't need it and as you advance you might want to put something here that does a little bit more damage. 
Another skill you can flex in and out is Elemental Drain if you don't like it or don't think you need it. And then we get to the ultimate choice. So there is a lot of ultimate choices. Mage's Guild, yes, it's annoying to get a hold of, but Shooting Star, pound for pound, if you just had one ultimate, will do the most. On my two bar builds, what I like running is Shooting Star in the back and then Dawnbreaker on the front. So I usually launch with the Shooting Star and then just use Dawnbreakers throughout. Shooting Star's advantage is it does big, huge AoE and damage over time if mobs are stationary. Plus it stuns mobs, which is really helpful in solo arenas. Downside, it's not mobile. So sometimes you drop a meteor on something and it just moves out and you completely wasted your ultimate. So you kind of have to know and play around with this. The other alternative, what I highly recommend recommend for the average player is Flawless Dawnbreaker. It's Fighter's Guild. It's very easy to get up and level. You'll notice that it's physical damage. The effectiveness now with a hybridization of ESO scales based off whatever is highest, your stats, whatever their highest, magic, weapon damage, spell damage, it doesn't matter. So don't let the physical damage component scare you from using this ability. It also activating it's going to give you weapon and spell damage increase by 300 for 20 seconds with an ultimate cost of 119 you'll see here, it's very easy to keep high uptime on this buff. So again, you have a couple different choices. If you're a new player and you're starting out leveling, just take Crescent Sleep for a while until you get up there, and then you can work on leveling those two skill lines. Another option if you're using Destruction Staff is Elemental Rage. The strength of this ability is the damage is massive radius in a short time. This is great and fantastic for solo arenas burning down bosses. Typically, I use this in a double bar setup on my back bar, but it can work here as well. Just realize fast channel, huge AOE, big deeps. So how we would use this build? Very, very simple. We're going to assume you're going to leave Camouflage Hunter on here just to keep it buff. So spell power potions, you don't really need to use them with Oaken Soul. If you do, it just gives you a little bit more recovery. So we're going to go ahead and use that. You'll notice that this doesn't aggro the boss and it debuffs them, giving me more damage. And so I'm going to hit a meteor first and I'm going to throw a spear, then light attack. I want everything to land at once. That way it spikes the damage. One, two, and then empower, bang, getting close. And then one, two, Three. And that's all we're doing right here is just keep on jabbing, keep on jabbing until the spear comes back up. You'll see it's one second, so I chuck it with the travel time and then bang. The trick with the jabs when you're weaving it is to obviously light attack like a heartbeat. Duh, 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 duh. You want to pair them together, but you'll see my foot kind of move up to pair the light attack and the foot moving up the fastest. Your character will look like this, almost like you're doing two things at once. So you have to kind of train your brain as the foot comes back up. That's when you're going to initiate the light attack. Just realize the light attacking is on a separate cooldown than doing your main abilities. Abilities have a one second cooldown. That's why it does this little animation. It's one second. But light attacks on its own cooldown of one second. So you, that's why light attack weaving is a thing. This is what it looks like. All you're doing is pairing a light attack with an ability in between. Now the Templar is a little bit unique because it has a one second channel. So let the leg moving up be your guide and when you light attack. It takes a lot of practice, just beating on a dummy is the best way to do it. And then as soon as the mob reaches about 30%, like what's it's gonna do here, I'm gonna keep maintaining my ultimate, I'm gonna drop that and I'll start beaming. And then I'm gonna make sure I keep my uh, breach up, light attack, and then I'm just beaming right here. Now about 15%, it doesn't make sense anymore to cast Blazing Spear, so I'm just gonna keep on beaming till it dies. And then that's it. You could put uh, something else on in Camouflage Hunter and you're good to go with the skills from the one bar build. Now let's switch real quick and talk about what I would replace in and out if I was gonna play this in a group. Okay, for group play, what would I add and why? I would add Purifying Light. Purifying Light here soaks up damage like a balloon. Consider it a very strong, low cost, easy to maintain, single target damage ability. It will just blow up things single target. Another reason Purifying Light is so strong is due to the Dawn's Wrath passive. Prism generating ultimate three every six seconds, and you'll notice this is a six second duration, pairs up very perfectly. And then two, casting a Dawn's Wrath ability grants you minor sorcery for you and your group, 10% spell damage. Now you do have Radiant Oppression on, so you kind of want to use this intermittently to keep this uh, maintained, even when you're playing a solo build. But this is a super strong, super cheap ability that I use single target. And then you have a flex bot, which I can flex a million different things in and out. And I've tested on parse dummies, I've tested it in vet trials, I've tested it in dungeons. What I think best is all around is solar barrage. 
Duration is 10 seconds. It's pretty cheap. It does AOE damage, but the real reason you're using is the empower buff. You're lighting heavy attacks by 40% while you maintain this. Another advantage of Solar Barrage is it doesn't require target. So you can pre buff and pre cast it before you launch into the action, giving all those juicy passives. Let's say you don't like Solar Barrage. You want something else. Maybe you want something that does even more damage. Well, there is a skill that's called Ritual of Retribution. The problem is it's extremely high magic cost, 4,802, and you'll see this, 2,268. So maintaining Ritual of Retribution in a trial, even with parse food, can actually be quite difficult on a one bar build, especially if you're using daggers like I do in trials. Another couple of options here that people will run and you need to be aware of is Undaunted Mystic Orb. This throws out a big orb and you can use a combustion synergy. Primarily why I don't run this is I'm throwing Blaze of Spear, which has a similar synergy effect, but realize Mystic Orb will do a ton of damage. Believe it or not, people are actually running Proximity Deck and PvE Trash Mobs. Very advanced, but just know that's a thing you could do. Another skill you could run from the Fighter's Guild is Barb Trap. Slotting is going to buff your bar with weapon and spell damage like we ever talked about, but it's going to arm and do minor force increasing your crit damage done. Usually you get this from a five piece set or some other way. And I like Barb Trap because it buffs your bar just having it on there and it does really, really good single target damage. And if you're under pressure, you got to have a shield put in harness magic. A purifying light single target and blazing spear are really good in a group. And then number one is your flex spot. Okay, we're going to move on and talk about the gear. There's a ton of options for you to pick and I'm going to explain why but let's start with the bread and butter and that's Oaken Soul. This is a one piece mythic. It is painful to get a hold of and I have a separate video link in the description below of how you get that. You have to have ESO plus, Braymore or some other thing to access this. You're going to get five leads. Once you get those five leads you can assemble this. Oaken Soul gives you a plethora of major buffs. Berserk, Courage, Brutality, Sorcery, Prophecy, Force, Protection, Resolve and then minor buffs. Fortitude, Intellect, Endurance and Major Heroism. Two long didn't read is you're going to generate tons of ultimates you're going to be very tanky you're going to have great resources and you're going to do tons of damage it's so spectacular that's why so many people are switching to one bar and it's very easy to parse 80,000 damage with a basic build because of this ring i'll give you another option to load out if you don't have oaken soul or you don't want to fuss with it now for the average player a five piece on my body is what i'm going to run and that's orders wrath this is craftable comes from the high isles and believe it or not it can parse very very high with some of the hardest hitting trials gear sets out there. The two through five gives you crit and a little bit of weapon and spell damage. The five piece is unique. Increase crit damage and crit healing by 8%. That's not a named buff. So it stacks on top of minor force, major force. So if you have major force coming through Moken Soul, and let's say you're using Barb Trap to get minor, and then you stack this on top of it, you're going to do a lot of critical damage. Just in case you're unaware, you need to be aware of your critical cap. The game now has a critical damage cap of 125. Your base is 50, so take this crit damage right here and add 50% to it. And you don't want to go above 125. So Khajiit, Shadow Mundestone, your champion points, all add this up. And you do not want to go above 225%, otherwise you'll have a dead stat. So Order's Wrath, that's a five-piece craftable high aisles. Let's say you don't have that and you want some options. Bossay is coming from Rock Grove. Very, very good. What it's going to do is increase your damage done by enemies by the missing max magic. The problem is you have to babysit your max magic, and that can be very troublesome for the average player. There's a new set called Whirl of Depths coming from the new trial, and this is really, really good. Similar to Bahasa's, but less management of resources and much easier to obtain. If you're watching this video, I'm going to assume you probably don't have access to a lot of trials gear. Another really good staple that we've been using for years and years is Mother Sar, Overland coming from Deshaun. The two piece gives you max magic, the rest gives you a lot of crit chance. So you can use this, get it off traders as well, put it in your body as something as a beginner, and then go to the Shadow Munda Stone, and then switch this out for something a little bit later. Another crafting option in case you don't have high aisles is Law of Julianos. Law of Julianos gives you a well-balanced, well-rounded five piece. That's one you pair with Oak and Soul. Step two, is another five piece on your front bar. I tested a bunch of them in actual live combat and deadly strikes perform the best. Increases the damage done with damage over time and channel abilities by 15%. Pretty much most of our abilities are damage over time abilities and this thing will outperform Medusa's and other sets I tried. Plus, 
best in slot items like Kinra's you don't really need because you get major berserk already from the Oaken Soul Ring. What's another set and alternative? And that's would be Pillars of Nerm. This is gonna do bleed damage in a big AoE, but remember it scales in effectiveness off your max stats, whichever higher. So this doesn't require a whole lot of anything. It's more beneficial to run this in a two bar setup because it does have a proc chance. You can go to your back and then you flip to your front and proc it, but a very easy set and forget damage setup. Another one for crafters out there is New Moon Acolyte. Downside of this is gonna increase the cost of your abilities by 5%, but it does 401 weapon and spell damage at gold quality and something that a lot of players can run because it's craftable. And then you have two different options if you want to get the minor force buff at all times, Medusa's. This is gonna give you a well-balanced amount of crit, plus you're gonna get minor force at all times, not having to use an ability, which is very nice. I parsed Medusa's versus Deadly Strikes and Deadly Strikes outperformed dramatically. And then a non-beginner friendly five piece, but super high damage is Togvins. This is medium armor, so you're gonna kind of run it on the jewelry in your body with weapons, just like you would Deadly Strikes. And it's gonna give you more critical chance and it's gonna give you the minor force buff at 10 stacks. Downside, it takes some time to build this up. So you have to stay in combat prolonged to see this taking advantage of it. And that's the setup. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the gear chart. So the body piece is what I'd run as Divines. Don't worry so much if you can't get a hold of the Divines right away or you can't craft it. The five piece is really important. On the jewelry, I actually run infused. Unless you're doing veteran trials regularly, you're gonna see more advantage out of the infused trait, believe it or not, over Bloodthirsty. Bloodthirsty comes in very, very handy when dungeon hard modes or veteran trials and the bosses have a lot of HP and the fights last for two, three, four, or five minutes. In a dungeon or solo, if the bosses are lasting 30 seconds or one minute, you're not gonna see the advantage. Put a magic recovery glyph on one of the jewelry pieces if you struggle and spell damage on the rest. Then you have the weapon choices. If you're gonna go the dual wield route, what I would recommend doing is run Nurn if you could in your main hand and your offhand charge with flame and poison glyphs. If you're not, you're gonna run a precise staff on the front with either flame or shock. Both do a lot of good damage. And then magic glyphs on the body and you have to have one medium because deadly strikes comes in medium and we need it to have active at all times. So you go with the chest. And that'll give you six light, one medium, which is a great blend due to the passives. There's also another one piece here, slime crawl. It gives the most critical chance possible. I like that because it affects both our healing and our damage done. However, you can use something like Scoria one piece, which gives offensive penetration and that will actually do more raw damage, but it won't influence our healing. And then for options for Oaken Souls, if you don't have that, Pale Order, consider that the best in the slot for pure raw healing and not damage. Another myth that that's worth collecting is Death Dealer's Fate gives you a huge max stat pool for being in combat. Now let's switch gears and talk about the non Oaken Soul loadout. If you're just starting and still want to rock a one bar build. If you're rocking a one bar build, I'm going to assume you're going to need help with survivability. So that's what I'm going to start. And then we'll take out the training wheels and give you alternative sets, like I mentioned previously, to amp up more damage. Number one set here is Ice Heart. This is base game coming from Frost Vault. What this does while you do critical damage, you're going to get a shield. You're going to do a little frost damage as well, but it's going to protect you dramatically. There's Bastion passive and champion points that actually ramps this shield up. So it just makes you really survivable in a two piece monster helm. Some alternatives to that, if you don't have it or you want something else. Scourge Harvest. This is going to put a beam and give you major vitality while the beam holds and just heal you like an absolute hammer. And then what would a Delta's gaming build be without Engine Guardian? Use an ability, have a chance to summon stamina, magic, or health. All things are really needed and you can really increase your survivability. And now we're going to start with the body pieces. A good option here is Shackle Breaker for new players. Vardenfell Morrowind DLC, which is now a part of base game. It just gives you a lot of max stats, which is quite useful. Another option that I go with and a lot of people sleep on is Withered Hand. The five piece, when you're in combat, enemies die, you get 1500 health and over 1500 magicka and it can recur every three seconds. So especially playing solo, you can get a lot of resources back and health and it comes from Alakir base game and it's extremely easy to get a hold of and dirt cheap on the traders. Another set that I think is very, very well and underutilized non-trial is Overwhelming Surge. Similar to Withered Hand, it's gonna give you back resources, but it's gonna do it through doing damage. So when you're in melee range, so 
soaking up tons of damage and doing damage with overwhelming surf you get a ton of resources back and a little bit extra damage and last but not least if you just want a damage set you can go with war maiden at 600 weapon and spell damage to your magic abilities which basically all of ours are so a really good five piece set here that comes from vardenfell as well or you can buy it on the traders now we're gonna go with a survivability set to pair with this is again, I'm going to assume that you need a little bit more survivability. And if you want, you go with Hexos Ward. This is going to be on the jewelry and weapons In dealing critical damage grants you a massive damage yield. Between this and Ice Heart, when you're throttling down doing damage, you should be extremely tanky. It comes from the Deadlands and also is very, very cheap on the traders. So I would use this in combination with Ice Heart if you struggle. The very first thing I would replace is this Hexos Ward set as it doesn't do a whole lot of damage for you. It just really keeps you survivable until you learn how to play the build. Then you can switch that off and you can go even more damage. We've already talked about a couple options, but in case you skip that, because this is YouTube, I would go with Medusa's five piece, keeping your bar very simple and giving you the minor force buff. Another option would be Pillars of Nern, proc set doing tons of damage. And since you're not using Oaken Soul, the highest damage producing thing you could go with is Kinross coming from Black Drake Villa, giving you major berserk when you lie attack weave and you have five stacks built up. So with this non Oaken Soul Mythic, you need to find the sweet spot between survivability, resource sustain, and damage. Once you have the survivability down, start taking out the training wheels and add damage sets to really ramp up your deeps. Now let's move on and talk about the miscellaneouses of this build and what you should be focused on to get the most out of it. We're going to start with the racial choices first. And for racial choices, I would highly, highly, highly recommend the High Elf. It has a very unique passive. When you're using ability with a channel, you get five percent less damage you'll notice that five percent less damage is not a named buff so it stacks with minor and major protection reducing your damage when you're hitting sweeps and have oak and soul on by 20 percent due to the templar passive this passive and having oak and soul for major protection making you extremely tanky and taking much less damage so you don't need to heal as often you also get max magic weapon and spell damage and so forth a bunch of other different right, racial choices you could go with the khajiit for probably the most raw critical damage dunmer also has a balanced max stats but don't freak out about the race it really doesn't make that much of a difference unless you're a one percenter we're gonna go into here and we're gonna go to the attributes now 64 and attributes into magic i would look at your health first you right run around 22 to 23 hells in health if you're an average player if you're using parse food and your god's gift to the game yes you can get away with 17 to 18 thousand but i'm assuming watching this you're not so i would stick with 22 to 23 thousand health and then put the rest in a magicka regardless of what your race is or whatever that'll give you enough room if you screw up and make a mistake where you're not going to get one shot we go down here i go with the munda stone specifically if i'm using daggers the reason why is i want my crit chance to be very very high right around 60 percent so this is where daggers and why they are so strong comes into play if i switch out from a staff and i put daggers on right and then we go look at my crit now we're at 53 percent if we get it to 60, what we're going to do is we're going to use the Munda Stone over here, and that's called the Thief. So now with the Thief up, self buff, I'm at 63%. That's right around the street spot. Try to get to 60% spell critical, and then the rest into critical damage, and then the rest into spell damage, and you should have a really well-balanced build. For consumables, lot to choose from here. Clockwork Citrus Filet, very expensive, but it gives you what you need. Max health, recovery, max magic, and magic recovery. The cheaper alternative is Witch Mother's Potent Brew, giving you less of it. Less magic, less magic recovery, and less health. But it's very, very cheap, and you can use it as a substitute. If you're wanting to parse and see how well you do on a parse dummy, Ghastly Eyeball is your friend, increasing your max magic and giving you tons of magic recovery, but it doesn't give you health. So you'll be right around 18,000. Use this at your own risk. Potions. Have a lot of options in potions. If you're using Oak and Soul, you're going to get your minor buffs, but you're not going to get your major. So you don't necessarily need to use spell damage potions, but if you use what I call trash pots, you'll notice you only get 28.7 seconds of your major intellect. If you go to fancy tripods, you're going to get 47.3. That's due primarily to this passive here in crafting alchemy 
medicinal use, giving you a longer effect on potions. So we go back to our potions. The main thing we're going to want to run is something that keeps our magic recovery going for 47.3 seconds so we can use these on a 45 second cooldown. Doesn't have to be spell damage though if you're a PvP or those are quite cheap. Now we're going to talk about the champion points and there's a lot to cover here so let's just get at it. So this is Dynamic CP, a helpful little uh, add-on that I have for the champion point system. Number one thing I'd want you to do if you're a new player watching this, I would start here at Eldric Insight and I would come down to Staving Death, okay? I would take 10 into Eldric Insight. I'd come down here and take 10 in a quick recovery. And then I would put 20 into preparation, reducing damage from NPCs by 10%. Number one thing to do to increase your survivability. We've already talked about major and minor protection and using sweeps and a high elf. Stacking on top of all this, you'll be so much more survival. We'll then worry about damage CPs. Damage CPs, you can take two of them right out the gate. Untamed Aggression and Arcane Supremacy. Not top to your damage, but they don't need a line to get there. You can take them right away and just one point already increases your spell damage. For endgame, Game, I like these four slotables. Fighting Finesse, because I don't have to be at the back of the mob, like Backstabber, which is useful for trials. Wraithful Strikes, because it increases the damage of all my abilities. I don't have to sweat it and figure out which ones is which. Biting Aura, because I mainly hit puncturing sweeps over and over and over, and that's my main spam, will does AoE damage. And then Masters of Arms, which basically affects pretty much everything, so that's why I pick that. Now, Deadly Aim is very, very good if you're going to do constant light attack weaving. So you have a flex spot you can pick right here. I would flex in or out Biting Aura aura depending on your, what your ability is and how a light attack weave works for you. Let's come over to the red key which affects performance and you'll notice these three slotables straight away you can get right away as a new player start here. The one you would work towards to primarily would be siphoning spells for more recovery when you kill critters. Another one if you listened to me earlier about Ice Heart and Hexos Ward 5 piece gear set is this increases your shields by 15%. Those will apply to that ability harness magic if you're using it in the gear sets. So again you're struggling with survivability, sacrifice a little sustain here. Rejuvenation, fortified, boundless vitality. And then I come over here. The main thing to notice about the green is this right here, treasure hunter. This is super helpful when you're farming gear sets. This rationer, liquid efficiency, will save you a little bit of gold. And then Steve's blessings help you move a little bit out of combat. If you have a gazillion champion points like me, consider taking gifted rider, increase your mount speed, and then war mount so you don't have to fuss with stamina costs outside of combat. Well, gang, that's a deep dive on the Magpar and for one bar build. I hope you enjoyed this, got something out of this. Take this as a blueprint, make it your own, and make it work for you and whatever you see fit. It's very, very good now to run a one bar build for the average player, being easily able to parse over 70,000 and do vet trials. If I can do it, anyone else can, especially doing those pesky solo arenas, which people constantly have trouble with. So stack a shield, run a couple abilities, and start melting it. And leave me a comment hit that like and subscribe if you want more of these one bar builds and i will keep cranking them out thanks for watching